Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear friends, greetings from Father Franklin de Souza. Today we are going to reflect on the Sunday, third Sunday in ordinary time. And this Sunday is particularly called as Word of God Sunday. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given to us. As we reflect upon the word of God, give us your spirit to understand what we hear, what we reflect, so that we may live our lives according to your way. We may be the witnesses for your in your vineyard for your word. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh that great city and call out against, against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day journey. And he called out, At forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them and he did not do it. Psalm 25 Response O Lord, make me know your ways. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. O Lord, make me know your ways. Remember your compassion, O Lord and your merciful love for they are from of old in your merciful love remember me because of your goodness O Lord O Lord make me know your ways good and upright is the Lord he shows the way to sinners he guides the humble in right judgment to the humble he teaches his way O Lord, make me know your ways. A reading, a reading from the St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. First letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 to 31. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives Live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Acclamation, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, Alleluia. A reading from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee 
proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. Dear friends, the call of the first four disciples, Simon and Andrew, James and John, two sets of brothers, a common profession called by Jesus to a common vocation from being fishermen to being made fishers of men. We are struck by the succinctness of the call from Jesus. Just two words, follow me. And the promptitude of their response. They leave their nets immediately and follow Jesus. They do not debate, they do not discuss, neither they delay, deter, or delay Delhi. They leave their boats and their nets and their father and their fellow fishermen and follow the master. Jesus offers them no road map. Following him is not an ideology. It rather demands that we follow him. We must be so, we are so fascinated by Jesus that we are prepared to give up everything and cling to and give in to him. Where Jesus would be leading these first four disciples? They do not know. Often in life, we do not know when Jesus is leading us. That is not important and does not matter. What is really important and matters is to know that Jesus is leading us. Jesus calls the first four disciples even as they are engaged in their daily work. It is in the scriptures of our daily ordinary lives that Jesus speaks to and calls us. It is there that we must learn to listen to and look for him. In the first reading of today, God calls Jonah and Jonah diverts that call and goes to, instead of going to Nineveh, he goes to Tarshish. You know, he was called by God for a particular mission, like these four disciples, like St. Paul, but he refuses. Then he tries to escape from the call, from the word. He couldn't. We know the story of Jonah. They threw him from the boat and a big fish came and swallowed him. And after three days, the fish 
vomited him and again God's call comes that, that, that is the reading of today he says go to the Neve if once God catches you he will not leave you he will lead you he will be with you but what we need to do we need to cooperate with him that's all he will do everything sometimes our ego sometimes our selfishness it will not allow us to cooperate with God's word same thing happened to Jonah instead of going to Nineveh he ran away to Tarshish now again he comes to God tells him go to that city Nineveh three days and three nights he walked he proclaimed what God wanted to tell those people scripture or preaching or the proclamation of the word of God or evangelization is not that what I want to tell the people but what God wants to communicate to his people through me that means we are only an instrument Nineveh God loved Nineveh God wanted them to transform he gave them one more chance that's why he called uh, Jonah as an instrument so he went and proclaimed the you know good news people were touched king was touched they declared a past they gave up everything and God relented from punishing them see this is the strength you know the power of the word of God word of God brings repentance repentance reconciliation and renewal and also a, a, a life that is of witness and that is what uh, we see in this chapter of Jonah, book of Jonah. And same thing in the second reading, if you have heard, St. Paul tells uh, that for the present form of this world is passing away. Don't be enticed by the lure of the world. Attractions, distractions and destruction. So let us not get attracted. And let us ask the Lord today, being the Sunday of the Word of God Sunday, we have heard, these disciples heard the word, immediately they followed. They didn't look back here and there. That's why, you know, they didn't discuss, they did not delay, they did not debate. They just followed Christ. There is no debate when we follow Christ. There is obedience, there is surrender and there is absolute trust in the word of God. And that is the reason, if you see the vocation stories in the scripture, take the vocation of Amos, take the vocation of Jeremiah, take the vocation of Isaiah, take the vocation of Ezekiel, take the vocation of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, take the vocation of Moses. Everyone's vocation story, there is God who calls them and God who leads them. And God who works through them. And that is the beauty of the word of God. Today as we are on the word of God Sunday. Let the power of the word of God heal us. Power of the word of God lead us. And we know today there is a structure called in our church. Uh, the worship structure. And these are, these are for, uh, you know, for uniformity. And uh, you know, to help us out. We are, not, uh, uh, we, are, we, we are not tied to those things. We are for Christ. Christ gives us real freedom in our lives. The word of God gives the real freedom. So that is the reason these four disciples, uh, even Jonah, even Paul, they experienced this freedom in their lives. And they were transformed and they proclaimed the good news and they witnessed Christ. So today, being this Word of God Sunday, we also take an uh, oath that uh, we will always obey the Word of God. We read the Word of God. We obey God and we will uh, do the mission that is given to us uh, according to the plans of God, according to the ways of God, according to His inspiration, that is His Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I praise and glorify Thy name. I thank you for all the blessing that you have shared upon us. I pray very especially as I proclaim this good news, let this good news bring healing to each one of us. Especially all those who are listening to me right now, Lord. I bind blocks, bondages, curses, disturbances to go out from them, Lord. Let this word of God bring healing, also more occasions to witness and to proclaim your good news to the nations. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, share this word with the, your friends. Also pray for me and pray for my mission. Amen.